I'm Ben, and this is Michael and Leslie, and we're here today to talk about some basics about secondary sources. So, Michael, what's your go-to? My go-to, let, let's just start with treatises, because it, it, it's the broadest thing out there. Um, examples right here, multi-volume sets a lot of times, but it covers the breadth of the subject. If, uh, if you need a, a source, um, that covers everything about negligence, you know, there's uh, treatises are the way to go in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, treatises carry a lot of weight. They can be electronic. Um, my favorite though is probably Wikipedia, which I think all three of us mm -hmm. use. So yeah. not, a, not a treatise, but there's another secondary source. Just as a get started, get your head around a topic, Wikipedia, and then I might go to a treatise. Yeah. And they're also available online? Lexis, Westlaw. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Yeah, treatises, Lexis, Westlaw, Bloomberg Law. Uh, different publishers, so they may have different treatises, but you can go to uh, online instead of having to use the books. Um, I kind of like practice guides, and so this is a practice guide on Virginia DUI law. These are also available in Westlaw, Lexis, um, sometimes in Bloomberg. What's nice about the practice guides is they tend to be... A little trouble there, I, 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 yeah, <laughs> a little trouble. Um, practice guides tend to be jurisdiction specific, so where this is a general treatise on contracts, covers kind of the law of contracts across the country. Uh, practice guides focus on a particular state like Virginia and are very practical. They're designed to get you through how to handle a case from start to finish in a particular area. And so those can be nice resources. I think another resource that is pretty specific, at least topically, is an ALR. And so those are annotations if you're looking in your blue book. These are kind of like advanced law review articles. They're written by an expert on a very specific topic. They have a nice breakdown jurisdictionally of how different courts have handled that topic. If there's an annotation on your topic, you're golden. Problem is, because they're so specific, it is not universal. There's not going to have an annotation on every topic. But I think a good place to look. And those are also online as well. Speaking of sometimes good, sometimes bad, I use law reviews a lot. Yes, um, I and um, again, easy to search online. Um, and so. Uh, if, if you used Wikipedia and because you, you had no knowledge of whatever, it's it's you've got your subject matter. It, it's a great way to find. What's it your on. favorite part about a law review article? Who so, you know it? Footnotes. <laughs> you guys work on the footnotes. The footnotes are awesome. That's where you can get a lot of the leads to the sources that you really need. The law review article might not be what you ultimately need, but the footnotes will get you there. Right. Right. So what about? This. Uh, yeah, so the, what about this? So this is Amger's second <laughs> legal encyclopedia. Do you guys use it for legal research, a legal encyclopedia? No. <clears throat> Why not? I, it's just so broad. It is so overwhelming that... Um, so when would somebody use it then? I think it's a really great entry point yeah. if you have a little bit of knowledge, which you do as a law student, um, and you need to get your head around a topic fast. It, you know, it would not be, it's not comprehensive, it does not cover jurisdiction specific information, but if you just need to know, I think Ben uses the example of like difference between slander, libel, defamation, mm -hmm. that's a great place to go and get your head around all of that so you can go talk intelligently. With your boss. Right. Yeah. Or with your friends. Or with your friends. <laughs> to me, it, it, it's a lot like, uh, you know, the, the treatises, I, you really have to to know a little bit about what you're talking about, I think, sometimes, for me, just to... But a treatise wait. carries a lot of weight, or can carry a lot of weight, and a legal encyclopedia is rarely going to carry a lot of weight. Right. So how would we rank these, then? Well, we have one more, the restatement. Oh. Uh. Um, you've probably used this in contracts as a 1L, would be maybe the first time you've been encountered them, written by experts, they try to find black letter law, so the bare minimum legal level. Yeah, that's there. right, so they're trying to, and it's kind of like a summary, they're looking at all the cases on a particular area and trying to 
take out, yeah, tease out the rules, the black letter law rules that you like learn in class. Um, so yeah, they're they're general, they're summaries. But they they can pack a wall up as yeah. far as citation wise. And Courts rely on them. Respected. Yes. So so those they can be helpful. So I guess then it depends on where your practice area is. If you're in a firm or if you're in academia, right? yeah. As awesome. to and where, what type what, of question you're dealing right. with on any given moment, mm -hmm. right? And the other thing is, don't forget people. Absolutely, it can be a really great secondary source. Yep. I mean, we may not have given you that impression in this little chat, <laughs> but we are pretty phenomenal. But whomever you're working with can also help. That's right. So, um, anything else we've missed is critical. I don't think so. Secondary sources. Everything you need to know right there. Right there.